So far we've seen how the input and the output of a system are related in the time domain and in the frequency domain. So we have a, a, we've seen the time domain representations of a system. So here we have an example um, of a difference equation. So this side over here is a time domain representation. Um, and we have the signal flow diagram which we can easily obtain from this difference equation. Okay, so we've already seen that. We've also seen the frequency domain view of a system, uh, which relates how the sinusoids that make up any input to a system would be altered by the system. So that would be their uh, frequency domain view. Now I'm just showing the magnitude response of the system here, and we can see that frequencies of a tenth, the sampling frequency will be boosted or amplified, whereas the higher frequencies are reduced. Um, and what I'm going to show you over the next few sessions is another view of a system called the Z domain view. And the Z domain view is very useful in the design of a system. But one of the key features of the Z domain view is that it is a link between the time domain view and the frequency domain view, or at least the frequency domain view that we've introduced so far. The Z domain can also be considered a frequency domain view, but let's just use these terms for the moment. But the key thing is the Z domain view is the link between the time domain and the frequency domain. So it's used to design a system to have a particular frequency response, and from the frequency response you can get, then get the, um, the difference equation for a system using the Z domain view of a system. Um, now it's a little bit tricky for people to get used to at first, the Z domain view, um, and what I'm going to do over the next few sessions is go through the following steps. Uh, I'm first of all going to introduce a graphical representation of the Z domain and show how that graphical representation is related to a system's magnitude response. Okay, So that's going to be my first focus. Um, and then we take a look at the mathematical representation of the Z domain view. And once you have a handle on that, it then becomes fairly straightforward to relate the mathematical view um, of the Z domain to a system's difference equation. So we're just going to go through these three steps. Um, I've often found that people struggle to um, keep track of what they're doing. So I just want you to bear in mind these three steps over the next few sessions and hopefully uh, it'll keep the focus on what it is we're trying to achieve.